Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about something new. We're going to um, be having like a tech talk here about the specific parts and all types of things. And today we're going to talk about the PSU or power supply unit. Index. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what the PSU is, the different cables around it, uh, how to calculate the wattage, A to plus certification, what type of cert certification there is, what what, uh, what is, known brands, and what to think about before buying. So what is the power supply unit, or PSU? Well, it's the part that gives all the other parts in the computer its power. So it's a big transformer, basically, that transforms your, you know, uh, wall outlet uh, power, one, 110 or, or 230, into either 12, 5 or 3.3 volts which is the three basic things or voltages that a computer will work with. The PC also has some fuses so it can protect against you know power spikes from the wall power. But um, more about protection later. Let's take a look at the cables. And here we have the power schematics of the most usual cables within the PC. Uh, to the left we have the 24 pin connector um, and the 20 pin connector which is mostly for old but also some budget boards today. Uh, if we look on the 24 pin though we see that there is a green cable and if you short that out with any of the black ones, any of the ground ones, um, the piece you should start. So if you want to try if an, if an older power supply is working, you can just short those two out and see if the fan in the power supply spins up. Let me show you a little quick how to do it. And as you can see the power supply spins up there in the corner. It's not a guarantee that it will work, but it, at least you know that um, it's not completely dead. Uh, and then we have the uh, 8 and 6 pin PCI Express connectors there, and we see that there is 12 volts and then ground. Um, we also have the 4 pin Molex uh, in the middle there, uh, 12, uh, 12 volts and 5 volts and then 2 grounds. And we also have the SATA cable that has both 3, 5 and 12 volts uh, on 3 pins each. Uh, and we also have the 4 pin connector for the CPU and today it's uh, a, an 8 pin connector. Uh, you, you can still see some, you know, buddy boards with 4 pins today still. But the most usual one as, as well there is the 8 pin connector. Let's take a more realistic look at the cables. And if you look on the left there, we have the 20 plus 4 pin connector. You just push them together and then, you know, insert them into the 24 pin connector. Uh, and you also have in the middle there, the 8 pin that is a 4 plus 4. And why they are separated is so you can use the new power supply on both old and new um, motherboards, as well as some budget boards. To the right we have the, twin, the, the 4 pin um, Molex cable that are sometimes still used in, you know, uh, add-in things and so forth. Uh, you also have uh, the SATA power cable to the right of that. And if we look up uh, we have the 6 pin and 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express connector for your graphic card. So uh, they can come in both 6 or 8 pin. And why is because some graphic cards use 6 pins still and some use 8 pins, so it's good to be able to just add in that extra two. Uh, so we've come to the wattage calculator, and this is a really good tool, but it's absolutely not a, an absolute. This is more of a guideline for you guys. So let's take a look on how it actually works. So once you input the URL, you will come to this website where you basically choose if this is a server, mini, mini ITX board or a desktop, you know, ATX or MATX. Um, and then you choose uh, which type of CPU it is. So for me, it's an Intel. 
and uh, let you choose which socket it is. So for me, it's 1151. Let's see, where is 1151? 1150. Ah, where's 1151? Am I blind? Oh, there. Haha. Uh -huh. Um, and then you choose which CPU you have. So I have the seven thousand nine thousand. Let's see. So let's scroll down. Now nine thousand seven hundred K. Standard speed. And uh, let's see when the CPU is at one hundred percent, like that. I have um, thirty-two gigs of DDR4. Um, it's four memory slots. I got an NVIDIA graphic card. I got the 2080 uh, from NVIDIA. And uh, no second card storage. I got uh, two M2. I got one. No, not SCSI. I want SATA. There we go. Uh, one of those. Um, no optical drives. Uh, no other PCI Express util. You know, ex uh, you know extra cards um, no PCI cards because, because that's old um, like me other devices no keyboard mouse standard issue actually I got the gaming but it's not gonna make a difference really uh, fans 120 millimeters uh, four of them quite standard uh, liquid cooling no not really uh, eight hours per day. Well, that's 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 kind of accurate. Calculate. So I would need at least 500 watts. No, actually, I would need more than 500 watts because this machine will pull 500 watts, and we all know that you need more than what it's actually going to use. Um, so you know, 600, 600 to 750. I would go 750 for one of these machines just to have you that little extra if you want to overclock or if you get some extra utilities like liquid cooling and so forth. So yeah, this is how you use this website. So let's talk about what these markings mean uh, on most power supplies. At least I hope it's most. Uh, these are efficiency uh, certification markings, so you know as a consumer um, what efficiency and grade this power supply will be able to deliver for you. Um, these are usually also means that, uh, you know, if it's a high certification marking, that means that the components inside are also, you know, a little bit better and will survive for longer and will be, you know, it will basically be just be a little bit more more stable for you and so forth because they use better grades, uh, you know, components. Let's dive more into what they actually mean, though. So to the left, you have the American market uh, schematic on what all these markings mean, as well as you have the EU two hundred and thirty volt to the right, and in the middle you have the server grade redundant uh, markings and what they mean. So let's take a little look at this. If you look on the ATA Plus, uh, you see that at you know one hundred peak performance, you will get delivered eighty percent of the the um, watts that it's taking from the the wall so if the power supply says that it can deliver 600 watts to your components that means that it's taking 20 percent more watts from the wall outlet um, so uh, why is this important well because you know your monthly bill or weekly i don't know how you pay uh, and uh, also as i said before so you know that the components inside are of a higher grade than uh, many of these, you know, Chinese brands or uh, budget brands. So why buy one of these known brands? Well, these brands get, you know, around a lot and people buy them because they feel safe with them. So if something goes wrong with, with one of these known brands, like the capacitor starts leaking their magical goo, um, that will get thrown up, thrown, you know, that, that will go out into the audience pretty fast and people will stop buying them. So, to go with these are not a 
you know, a certain that you will have a good experience, but it's at least expected from them. So these are some of the known brands I know, and they are usually pretty good, both when it comes to the plastic, the, the surge protection, the shorting protection, um, the ripples from the power supply, the general quality is usually good when it comes to these brands. I'm not saying that it's only these brands that you should buy, there's probably a lot of known brands in your countries. Um, and some of the Chinese ones has been pretty good that I've tested. But if I want to be as sure as possible that the general quality is going to be good, I choose one of the known brands. So this is something that can happen if you buy one of the cheaper ones. Uh, this was from a company called Hantol, and I also know that Ace of Sweden did this. Um, this coil that is supposed to transform electricity was basically just two cables going into a block of cement doing absolutely nothing. Uh, why they did this was so they could get a little bit of weight into the, into the power supply so you didn't get that cheap feeling of, you know, this power supply weighs nothing. And they add the extra weight so you get that exclusivity feeling to the power supply. So there's a couple of things you want to think about before buying a power supply. One of them, of course, being upgradability, that you have enough cables and power to, to be able to get that extra graphic card in or those extra hard drives or extra whatever. Uh, overclockability, that you have enough wattage on that 12 volt rail. Um, and protection, that if you want, you know, surge protection or short protection, that you get a power supply with that specifically. There's also a fourth thing I haven't written down, and then that is, of course, dimensions, because all power supplies doesn't fit in all cases. So see to it that you measure that and look that up. Uh, think also about the cable sticking out from one end. That is all for now. Bye-bye. Remember to subscribe and click a bell notification for more videos, as well as like, comment, and share. To be in the next weekend's giveaway, just see to it that you have subscribed and that you have commented on the video. Uh, if you have done that, you will be in the next weekend's spinning the wheel giveaway. Thanks for watching, have a good day now, bye bye!